What should clients look for when they outsource this important work and success plan? It's a good question. I mean, you think about when the legal environment, you know, do you want all the things that go with that? You want credibility and security and assurance and experience people. I think conversely, you have to watch out for some of my peers in the this rule called push button forensics, where you can go buy a tool, maybe even in the same computer. It's well. easy, but maybe you can work in a certain area of digital forensics. You come into retiring or whatever. You think, oh, I can be a digital forensics consultant. And you might have to go and you got a training. You push the button and out comes all this data and gives the client and the client's going, what? What, 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 is, is, it? what is all this? <laughs> so there's more to digital forensics than the technology. The technology is very useful. The new technologies that will really help us get to the facts that we're looking for quicker. But it's really how you interact with the client. Again, understanding their need, but being able to explain it to them and being able to explain it in a way that is understandable, that would be understandable to a judge or a jury or an arbitration, rather than just spouting out a lot of technical talk about binary code and lease bit encryption and things like that. The easy button sounds like it's tracking sports, technical based interpretation of that is really where yeah, it and, it, and it's probably a massive deal. As part of your friend's analysis surrounding sure. that, are you able to determine the recommended patch vulnerability software patches and that's sort of and access controls? I think I, I understand the question. Are you able to determine if that has happened in the past? Certainly we find lots of vulnerabilities in systems. You hear about zero day patch, it's like do it today because we're in trouble. I do find that some busy users get a little complex in this. They get a little like saying, hey, your operating system has a patch. You do and like, well, I'm in the middle of something, so I'll do it, so I'll do it tomorrow. Selling is the healthy cause, for sure. These patches are for a reason. And there are vulnerabilities everywhere. And software is not perfect. And it's never going to be perfect. This is an ongoing thing. So I think having uh, reading, uh, understanding when you turn in patches. A lot of software organizations with a patch can break something else. Okay. So there's a lot of concern about that. So a lot of people are like, it's well, like yeah. A lot of people are like, well, maybe I'll do that tomorrow and I'll just check online that nobody's complaining about. We do see some of that. But in most cases, these patches are really essential and to protect you from. You know, people are highly motivated to get your system. That's great insight. Appreciate that. We've got another question from David that just came in. How are the tools in creating the traditional e-district you know, platform? So how do they use it, right? It's going to be easier. There has definitely been a disconnect between forensic processes and e-discovery from a tool set point of view. We have seen some e-discovery service providers trying to provide data collection and forensic analysis tools and we've seen some forensic tools trying to provide tools for review and it's been a challenge. I do think there's light at the end of that tunnel though. I think most people who are experienced forensics now and know that maybe their task may be to preserve or fulfill the EDRM preservation requirement by doing the project. And what good in forensic image to an attorney who has discovery uh, and thinking about, okay, what do they need? So in forensic, there may be some filtering done, maybe even some searching, but ultimately the data set is going to go into some kind of review environment and some process and probably end up in a review environment. And I think that how that has been provided now by experienced people is really good for the receiving part. Previously, it might have been, here's a forensic image and work it out. Right. All we need is the email account. Well, it's in there somewhere. So I definitely see progress there. And I've been on the receiving end of productions and I've seen the more experienced people are actually trying to understand what you need. They're not trying to be adversarial. We're not trying to block you. They're just trying to help you do your job as, as part of this process. Well, this goes back to what you talked about how important it is discussing the outcome of my needs. Part of that, obviously, is talking about how they intend to interact with data. Backing up one step further, that means the output has to be staged properly to get to that 